is cello practice files number five, I believe. My name is Matt Groders. Um, I'm a music educator, a violinist, violist, and slowly but surely a cellist. Uh, cello is actually my ideal instrument, even though I train professionally to play the violin. If I could do it all over again, I would have played the cello. Um, I'm taking a video of my practice sessions throughout the summer months to uh, um, provide some content that might, I hope will be inspirational and useful to anyone who uh, is learning a second instrument or even a third instrument, um, and to beginners in general who might need some tips on how to practice through difficult sections, uh, which I'll just kind of talk through my own practicing, uh, my motivation, reasoning, um, and the steps that I take as I try to improve on something that I'm working on. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start out with some warm-up activities, and these uh, activities are, you know, I don't necessarily do them every time I practice, but they are good overall warm-up activities. So I'm gonna be playing some, some technical exercises, uh, rhythm patterns, lawn tones, and scales in order to get myself ready to play some more challenging music. First, check our tuning. That sounds pretty good. Uh, we're gonna do some lawn tones to start out here. be surprised on a third instrument how challenging something that might otherwise sound easy uh, or be easy can be uh, and also you know why not start more easy and then build up gradually Now 
this exercise doesn't specify a whole lot to me except for the articulation, the rhythm, and the starting direction of the bow. But if I wanted to make this more difficult, there are a whole bunch of different things I could do. I could practice it in multiple different places of the bow, being very specific about my placement. For instance, I could start right at the frog. Or I could start um, another quarter of the way up. Or uh, an eighth, I guess. Which is closer to what I did the first time. I could start in the middle. I could start, you know, another span up. Or I could start at the tip. And obviously I varied the dynamic on that last one. But if you wanted to keep it the same each time, you could do that too. And this would add a whole bunch of variation to an otherwise easy exercise. You could also switch the bowing around. And go up instead of down for your starting uh, direction. Number three. six years um, but I, I really struggle with maintaining my bow hold during the spiccato uh, my thumb slips 
away from the bow. And I don't know if it's because uh, I'm holding it at the wrong angle or because maybe there's something that maybe I need to get a better cello. I, don't know. I feel this instrument doesn't respond super well to just dropping the bow. It's not bad, but I, I need to get my arm involved more um, than I would with a violin or viola, so to speak. Uh, so to speak. Okay, number 12. see this in the video but I'm actually practicing in front of a huge mirror. A mirror can be very helpful for you in your practice because it shows you if your bow is going crooked and it also helps you to see how you actually look when you're sitting and when you're practicing because uh, posture is really important for playing the cello as it is for playing any other instrument well. Uh, the way that you sit and carry yourself is going to influence the sound um, indirectly uh, but directly it's going to influence the, the things that you use, the body parts that you use to produce the sound on the instrument. So you want to make sure everything's positioned well, and one of the best ways to tell if it is, is to use a giant mirror. So I move my stand out of the way because these exercises are easy enough where I can just kind of immediately play them from my memory if I just look once or twice. Um, so I'm going to pay more attention to the mirror now. So we've done the slurred staccati. We're going to turn the page again. And now we've got a retake bowing. as you see me doing these, I'm still a learner. I'm, I, I teach some techniques for practicing and some of my thought process as a uh, professionally trained musician and experienced practicer, but I'm no expert on the cello. I, I can only offer what I've learned and what I'm learning. Uh, if you see anything in my technique that you think I should change or that you think I should address or, or practice or work on, uh, or if you have any suggested resources for how best or what best to practice, um, please uh, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll try to respond as best as I can um, unless these videos become so wildly popular that it's too hard for me to respond to everyone in person which I seriously doubt will ever happen <laughs> as underproduced as these are um, but yeah please let me know <laughs>
Ooh, a real challenge. <laughs> Crossings without and with slurs. Or 
almost through with the whole uh, book. It's a little booklet, these exercises. <laughs> for a couple days so my hand is getting really tired already. it's good to be aware of which position you are moving from and going into by means of a guide finger. So what that means is if I'm uh, playing, if I'm shifting from a first finger in uh, first position, in this case the B on the A string, right, and I'm going to a uh, uh, third finger in third position, which is the E, well there's a note below the E in third position, right? It's uh, well, there's several notes, but the, the, the whole step away is the first finger D, right? Well, that's the kind of the bass note in third position, uh, that, that um, regular third position is, is rooted at. So uh, if you're going to the E above that D, sometimes it's good to uh, focus your shift attention on going from the B to the D and then adding the three on the E instead of just blindly jumping for the E. sequence you can hear you can hear a little bit of a slide when my ear is anticipating based on the rate of speed that my slide is coming when I'm gonna hit that D be in the correct position and then be able to put my third finger down and that happens in a fraction of a second <laughs> Uh, is much greater that I have to travel than it would be on a violin to do a shift from first to third position. But because of that aural awareness I've developed over the years, and because the distance is proportionally very similar even though the distance is further, I'm able to, you know, with not a whole lot of practice of this over the last six years, you know, just here and there as I, as I goofed around, been able to get pretty accurate with a lot of my shifts, uh, even though the instrument is it's, it's very different in many ways. Um, so thinking about your guide fingers and listening as you do a shift and, and preparing um, the physical motion of it will definitely help your shifting. <laughs>
I need to work on that one. <laughs> I, I don't have much experience uh, hitting uh, that that harmonic up there. Uh oh, chromatic alterations. you to hold they want me to hold down fingers on a certain string and then alter the fingering on another string so it's, it's a really good muscle builder for the left hand <laughs> 